Hello and welcome. You're watching us here on Chartbusters. It is a weekday, but the good part is that we've recovered a fair bit from the lows. I'm Mangla Malu with me, Nigel D'Souza. Nigel, uh, you know, the fact that we opened lower, that was given, but mm. we recovered and that's a good thing. Well, that's right. Uh, you know, Mangla, when you have a start uh, of a negative 350, 400 points, or it's always going to be risky for yep. the bears to go ahead and short the index. So, you know, the point we made earlier today was risk reward could favor the bulls if you get that first star low and that first star low is defended. For the time being, you know, we're off close to 150 points from the day, uh, low point of the day. So the reference points we've got, Mangalam, at around this, uh, you know, 17,160 odd. So let's hmm. see whether or not we can hold out. But um, good bounce is what you've seen. And what's more encouraging is the breadth of the market. Yeah. You had 170, 180 stocks that were advancing. That number's moved to around 650 stocks. So the crisscross lines should come up for you on the screen. All right, uh, it will come up for you on the screen. Meanwhile, just keep an eye out on a couple of these stocks. We're looking at it from uh, the FMCG standpoint. People are looking at, you know, some sort of security at a time when the global markets are seeing some risk. And Colgate is one of them that really stands out, up almost 4%. Remember, it is also, uh, you know, from the start of next month, we have the new leadership of Colgate coming in, and which is why maybe the street is betting big on things to turn around for Colgate itself. Uh, Time now to get you all the top stories that we're tracking this morning for you. It's a gap down start for the Indian market after a hawkish Fed chairman sparks a global sell-off in global equity markets. ITPSU banks worsted uh, all sectors apart from the FMCG space trades with losses. Reliance will hold its 45th AGM today. The street will be keenly watching out for updates on the Geo and Reliance retail IPOs and the succession plan for the group companies. IRCTC shelves plans for data monetization, withdraws tender issued to appoint a consultant for the same due to an absence of policy on protection of user data. And rights rates high after JV wins a 460 crore rupee order from Southern Railways. Nelco continues to rally yet another upper circuit after winning an order to provide in-flight connectivity services in the Indian airspace. The stock has rallied almost 22% in just the last two trading sessions. Well, let's get a quick technical check uh, then on the markets. Manas Jaiswal joins in. Hi, Manas. Morning. You know, Manas, uh, earlier today uh, when uh, trade started, the point that we were going with was that this dip could be bought into, you know, if you're a risky trader. Otherwise, if you want to just chill out, uh, you know, you just stay away from trading. So the easy huh. trade, so to call it, is over because you've got 150 points in the bag. What do you do from around the 17,300 odd mark? Uh, good morning, Nigel. Yeah, you are absolutely right that the comfort zone uh, is over now. And now I think Nifty may face resistance on higher levels. Because see, uh, Nifty has uh, given a confirmation of lower tops and lower bottoms of the daily charts. Nifty has broken uh, its 20 day moving average also after a very long time. So uh, I, I, I feel that uh, Nifty may face resistance on higher levels. But on the downside, I think you should go short only if Nifty breaks and uh, goes below 17,250. If it breaks 17,250, then you can set the target of around 17,000, which is its 50-day moving average. Till then, I think it is a better idea to play stock specific because we have seen uh, uh, some buying interest in, uh, um, uh, in in many counters. So I would like to go with uh, Colgate Public first because stock has given a fresh breakout on the daily charts. We have seen a breakout above 1620 with higher volume. So I think now Colgate Public can test 1680-85. So take a long position here. The stop loss should be around 16.04. And uh, second is a buy call on uh, Petronet because here also the stock is trading above 200 day moving average uh, in the morning. We saw a gap down. But again, uh, now stock is trading above its previous high of uh, 20, uh, 200, 220. So I think in Petronet, you can set the target of around 220, 28. Take a long position here. The stop loss should be around 219. All right. Take that point, Manas. Thanks a lot for that. Meanwhile, just keep an eye out on Mazgaon, Doc. Shipyard as well. The stock is up almost 8.5% in today's trading session. It was among uh, the unusual movers that we spotted on Friday as well with a gain of almost 12% percent. in this month itself. The stock has rallied 40% and most of the gains have come by after their first quarter earnings where the company has reported record performance and they do have a few triggers backing them as well. Good volumes on Mazagon Tip. But uh, let's take a short break. On the other side, we talk about Rolex Rings. That was another stock which was in focus on Friday. And now we know the reason why. You're tuned in to Chartbusters here on CNBC TV 18. Well, Rolex rings, that's the stock in the focus. Remember the subject, the stock was, uh, you know, in focus just a couple of sessions ago because there's a large trade that took place with the PE firm, Revendel, sold their 12.5% stake in the company for around 580 crores odd. 
Remember, this was a bit of an overhang. So once that's out of the way, the street seems to be a little bit more positive on the stock and it's seen a bit of a bounce from the levels that the block took place. But let's focus on business and the way ahead. We're joined by Mr. Hiran Doshi, the CFO at Rolex Rings. Hi, Mr. Doshi. Good morning. This is Nigel on this side. Good to finally speak to you, uh, uh, you know, live on television. Well, uh, you know, exports are closer to around 60% of your business. Now, I wanted to understand how much comes in from Europe. And with regard to this Europe exposure, could you tell us if you've witnessed any kind of slowdown? There's a power crisis out there. The currency as well has moved unfavorably. Will you get hit? Go ahead. Good morning, Nigel, and again, uh, good to see you. As far as our overseas revenue is concerned, we have uh, out of our 60% uh, overseas revenue, uh, in that, you know, 40% that comes from the European market and remaining from the majorly from the US market. Uh, touch wood, the uh, euro has, uh, you know, a bit lower come in the last uh, fortnight, and that has a marginal impact on our. Uh, this thing and down the line uh, we expect some kind of you know marginal decrease from uh, european market from november onwards but at the same time one of our customer base at usa they have added couple of new plants of their european facilities so uh, you know our momentum or rather our uh, uh, revenue built up would be more or less same and we expect not to have any kind of negative impact of uh, this currency downfall as well as uh, you know overall uh, the recession what we are expecting from the european market que uh, questions a few questions what proportion of your uh, exports uh, is from the europe it is uh, overall it is somewhere about 25% of my overall revenue it, that is from uh, european market okay of your overall revenue 25% and 40% of your exports take that point but you did have a fair amount of inventory pile up in the first quarter and a lot of the revenue would now be coming into the second quarter as well um can you give us a sense of how the second quarter is panning out for you right now um in the conference call you did say that you know 110 115 crore per month is uh, the kind of run rate that you're clocking in is that uh, sustaining right now yeah, that during uh, that monthly run rate, we are near to that only. It is in ranging of 100 odd crore even in the second quarter. And uh, more or less, you know, the second quarter would be on the same line uh, in uh, as uh, quarter one. And in our business, you know, we have generally the second half would be much better than the first half. Uh, you can say almost 45% something what there in first half and 55% of my remaining revenue that comes from the second uh, half. So we expect uh, this quarter would be more or less on the same uh, numbers what we had in Q1, again with the same kind of margin and uh, sustainability. But down the line, uh, we expect a bit, uh, bit a jump in the second half also. So 1,200 crores for the year with 23% margins. That's something you're aiming at? We are aspiring to that, yeah. Okay, all right. You know, another kicker will come in because that 16 megawatt power plant, the solar power plant, will give in some savings. And you've spoken about this in the past as well. My question to you is, when does it start uh, reflecting uh, for the company? Uh, and at optimum level, just to reconfirm, it'll save around 13, 14 crores, right? Uh, see, uh, the solar plant, that would be partially, you know, it would be operational somewhere in uh, October. October, October of this current fiscal and the remaining would be operationalized by March 23 and the full uh, next fiscal will be having that benefit and uh, as you said rightly the revenue benefit would be in the range of 12 to 14 crore rupees annually. All right uh, and what about uh, the, the excess land that you are planning to liquidate going forward can you tell us the size of the land by when are you looking to liquidate it what's the kind of money that you're looking to raise through it? company is having a non-core asset, a piece of land, which is uh, almost uh, 170 odd acres. And we are in process of, you know, liquidating the thing. We are in search of good buyer. And uh, uh, maybe in the recent future, uh, we expect something if the real estate market, you know, uh, is having some kind of better uh, uh, upward, then definitely we expect to get it realized maybe in uh, next fiscal. Where, where is it, this 170 acres land? It is uh, nearby to our factory only, almost say 25 kilometers away from our factory on the National Highway. Roughly, can you tell us what the going rate out there is of uh, one acre? Uh, it is ranging, you know, somewhere about uh, 
50 lakhs to 50 lakh. 80 lakhs or something. Yeah. So, so, so approximately at least, uh, you know, you'll get at least 80, 85 to 100 crores at least should come in. That is an FI 24. 24. What we expect. Okay, all right. We've got that then. Let's talk about your EV business. That's where the kicker comes in, you know, because that will be uh, the way ahead. I think last year you were around, around 7% odd in terms of contribution. And you were looking at taking it to mid-teens, I think. So for this year, how much will it contribute? And also, you know, when we did a show last time around, people are asking, Tesla is your client? Is, is, are they your client? <coughs> See, we are not uh, directly supplying to them. Yeah. And, uh, but indirectly? Customer. Indirectly, sir? Yeah, in indirectly, yeah, definitely. And uh, this year, we are planning to have uh, revenue overall, say, 10 to 12% something from EV segment. And uh, a few more customers are adding a couple of components required for EV. And we are very much geared up to, you know, produce EV components also as our facility is having that kind of capability. Right. So we expect 10 to 12 percent uh, revenue from EV in this current fiscal and maybe uh, something more in the next one. OK, 10 to 12 percent. I just wanted to understand about your EV business itself, uh, the potential of that. How much are you supplying per EV in terms of a contribution and how much is the headroom? Because you said a lot of clients are also asking for more contribution coming in from you. So just wanted to understand on a per car basis, what is the quantum that you apply, uh, you know, supply already and what is the potential here? See, as I told you that we are tier one supplier or something like that. We are not directly supplying to EV uh, manufacturers. So the components what we are supplying further, it will be processed, assembled by our customers and by uh, then it may, uh, it will go to the EV uh, car. So it would be difficult to tell you the overall, you know, the quantum of amount of EV vehicle or something, but the uh, number of components of, you know, the bearings uh, for which we are supplying bearing ring and certain uh, wheel hubs or two components kind of thing. So a uh, good amount or rather the sizable number of components are required for EV, what mm. we are able to produce. But uh, it's difficult to uh, okay. tell you that how much quantum it would be. Okay, all right. Uh, Mr. Doshi, final question then from my end. Uh, you know, this year you're talking about doing around 1,200 crores, margins of around 23%. Uh, and you have been sounding optimistic that mid-teens to 20% is the growth number you're looking at. Uh, there could be a few challenges on the way, but as you're saying, in Europe, the challenges will be offset by the U.S. client. So for FY25, yeah. can you look at those peak levels of around 1,650 crore rupees? Is that gettable? I'm just doing rough math. 1,200 crores, yes. you grow by 15 to 20% for FI24 and then FI25 as well. So 1,650 yeah, crores yeah. on the cards? Very much. It would be more than 1,550 crore at the current commodity price level. You mm. know, we expect and uh, we aspire to achieve uh, almost 90% of our uh, capacity. What yeah, we just just so, a correction, sir. I said 1,650 crores. So that's the level, right? Uh, that but uh, what we are aspiring is more than 1550 you know again it depends on the commodity pricing we are uh, uh, getting some kind of indication of you know the downfall in the steel prices also so okay. that will affect overall my uh, revenue number just, just a quick follow up on uh, this you said incremental uh, businesses this year could get you 200 crores of revenue from 1000 you go to 1200 your capacity utilization is close to around 63 65 odd percent you aspire to take that to about 90 odd percent and industrially, I mean, you've uh, planning, uh, you've planned to add around six, seven further plants of, uh, uh, you know, uh, SKF, uh, two to three added last year. You have Timken as well. Uh, how much will industrial contribute to your overall revenue? See, as I told, uh, told you that this 200, 250 crore revenue, that what is we expect from the new customer and existing customer adding their new plants in the next uh, you know 15 to 18 months at the same time we are expecting good uh, turnaround in our existing customers and incremental demand one of our main o2 component uh, you know customer base at usa they have given certain indication that maybe uh, from december onwards they would be adding 20 25 percent additional requirement for that and this 1650 and 1550 to 1600 crore revenue that you're targeting in fy25 would be at the same margins or would margins improve because of uh, the mix no, definitely it would be having better margin. How much? Compared to the current one. Yeah. We are expecting uh, at least, you know, uh, additionally 5 to 10% margin on my current rate. So so your margins are currently around 20 to 23%. It moves to what level? 
to around 24 25% it, it would be ranging it would be ranging 23 to 25% in somewhere in between okay. it's been good speaking to you mr doshi thanks so much for stopping by the street has taken note of all you had to say the p overhang is out of the way for the time being you have a market which is trending with a cut of around 250 points on the nifty the mid cap index as well as in pain and the stock is up close to around a percent odd not coming cheap but it appears that the company is on the growth path and that's something that the street likes. For the time being, we slip into a short break. You come back. We continue our focus on markets and stock-specific action. Don't go anywhere. Stock's doing well, but uh, we'll keep an eye out on IRCTC. That's the one in focus because this morning there was news that they've withdrawn, uh, you know, plans to uh, appoint a consultant for data monetization. But now we understand that sources are telling us uh, that they've dropped the plans for an offer for sale as well. Yash joins in with more details. Yash? Well, that's right, Mangalam. So it's not just one uh, withdrawal that we're talking about that was with respect to appointment of consultant, but also the offer for sale plan as far as the company is concerned. Uh, that seems to have been withdrawn by IRCTC. This was an important offer for sale for the company. The company was looking to raise about 3,000 crore via dilution of about 3.5% stake. The RFP was with the bankers for quite some time. They were looking at the right time. Uh, but what we've been given to understand the latest on this one is that that plan that RFP for raising that 3,000 crore through offer for sale has been withdrawn. Uh, the reason that I've been given to understand is uh, volatile market condition uh, because of which this particular plan has been withdrawn and it's not like uh, the plan has been kept on hold and they'll continue with the same RFP going forward when they when they think it's the right time. But the RFP itself has been withdrawn. So whenever the company wants uh, to raise this money through OFS, it will have to float a fresh RFP with the bankers, do roadshows and go forward with the offer for sale but as of now that very RFP with the bankers for offer for sale has been withdrawn for IRCTC. Important story Yash thanks so much for stopping by and giving us all those details could be one of the reasons why the stock that was at around 666 rupees odd it's recovered closer around 4 percent odd from the low point of the day. Moving on then Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi yesterday laid the foundation stones of two key Suzuki projects in Gujarat including an EV battery manufacturing plant with an investment of roughly around 7,300 crore rupees odd. Parikshit joins us to tell us more on that. Parikshit? Here in Mahatma Mandir in Ahmedabad, the Prime Minister laid the foundation for two future projects of the Suzuki Group. One, an electric vehicle battery manufacturing plant in Hansalpur, Gujarat, which will come up with an investment of 7,300 crores, and a new car manufacturing plant for Maruti Suzuki in Karkoda, uh, Haryana, which will come up with an investment of 11,000 crores in phase one. T. Suzuki, the chairman of the Suzuki Motor Corporation, also announced the setting up of a new company here in India. All right, let's also hear out what Maruti's uh, Shashank Srivastava had to say when asked about improved sequential sales. The sequential growth that you have seen in the last few months has been made possible because of the increased availability of semiconductor components. But uh, as I've been saying, um, we haven't really reached that 100% mark so far. And it really depends on how we can um, adjust our production going forward to be in line with the underlying demand pattern. So that would determine the trajectory from here on. I think uh, if you look at the industry overall, uh, should do well. We are probably going to see an industry of somewhere between 335,000 to 340,000 uh, units, which uh, um, is uh, uh, very good because uh, July was 342,000 and it was the highest ever in the Indian auto industry. Well, Parishad also spoke to the management of Madhusan Sumi, Mr. Segal himself. He remains optimistic on India's EV demand scenario. Let's hear out what he had to say. India is a very important country for us, uh, for both MSWIL and for SAML, because in India, the demand is really huge and there is a lot of scope. Mm. And people are going up the value chain, which is very exciting for us. All right, just keep an eye out on Reliance. That stock has now moved into the green ahead of uh, uh, the 45th annual general meeting, which will start this afternoon. So that's a stock which has uh, recovered a fair bit. That could be one of the game changers in the second half of trade. Now has moved into the green. But for all that and more, we will uh, take your leave now. The team of Trading R comes up next after this short break. Thank you for watching Chartbusters.